fear of abandonment, a guided meditation for your deep sleep and your relaxation. Spoken and written by myself, Lauren. The focus of this guided meditation is your sleep and your relaxation. We are going to start this guided meditation with a preparation. Then we're going to have a quiet talk about fear of abandonment and what we can do to manage this fear and work through a fear of abandonment. We are also going to do a progressive relaxation through this process and a preparation for sleep in the form of a guided meditation. It is really important if you struggle with fears of abandonment that you seek professional help. Meditation is a supportive therapy and is not intended to replace professional help. We all need professional help at some time and there's no shame in, in doing what serves you and exhibits, demonstrates self-care. Before we start, I want you to withdraw from all possible sounds and noise that you are able to control. And those sounds and noises you can't control, except there's always those sounds we can't control. And really, life is noisy and it's important that we learn to meditate in the noise, the mayhem of life. It is not about having a calm, peaceful life. It is about how we internalize experience and how we choose to feel about the experiences we have, rather than the experiences being inherently calming experiences. Now, make a decision where you're going to meditate. If you're using this to go to sleep, then your bed would be a logical place to meditate. Or perhaps you're using this for an afternoon nap or a rest. So you might use a yoga mat. You may want to lie in Shavasana on a yoga mat and finish the meditation with Shavasana. You may sit in a comfortable chair I recommend an upright chair so that your spine is straight or your bed. Make sure that you are all comfortable in the space that you have chosen. We're going to start in the meditation position and then I'm going to have a quiet talk about fear of abandonment and that talk will lead slowly, steadily to the meditation. My voice will become slower and slower and more and more quiet to help you train your mind to turn off. When we start the meditation, it's important to realize that we control our mind. Our mind does not need to be like an unruly puppy that jumps all around. We train the puppy of our mind in order that we feel a sense of peace. So when we're talking about fear of abandonment, let's work towards looking down upon fear of abandonment. If this is an issue that causes you great anxiety, then this is probably not the meditation for you to go to sleep today. 
And remember that professional. Remember to use professionals to help you, direct you in a, a management plan. Let's begin. Sit down or lie down comfortably and we will begin. Start with the breath. Allow the world to just be around you at this time without judgment. If your mind is bouncing around to different issues, very gently draw it back. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out through your nose. Very gently. All peace, all happiness is about being gentle and feeling gentle. I know at times that's hard. I know at times it's difficult not to react. But peace and happiness comes from a gentle sense of self. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Breathe in through the nose, slowly. Focus upon the breath and breathe out through the nose. You are quite capable of looking down upon your breath and noticing the pattern of your breathing. Notice the pattern of your breathing because the pattern of your breath is a way that your body can communicate with you and let you know how you truly feel and how you are. Sometimes in meditation we can slow our breathing right down and sometimes that is a little bit more difficult because of where we are sitting on that particular day emotionally. That's okay. That's okay. The attitude of feeling okay and being okay is a vital one. Because sometimes there are times that life is not okay. But we can still choose how to be with that life. We can still choose that. So let's choose to feel okay. Okay is a useful term because it's not brilliant, it's not blissful, it's not euphoric, it's peaceful, accepting and contented. So let's be okay. Breathe slowly in through the nose and out through the nose. Focus on the repetition of breath. Focus on allowing the breath to move your mind gently away from concerns, issues or daily events. Breathe slowly. We're going to have a quiet chat now about fear of abandonment. If this chat brings up any strong feelings, this may not be the meditation for you. This is a supportive therapy to support your sense of calm, not to solve the world's problems.
fear of abandonment. There are two things I would like to say to start off my talk about fear of abandonment. The first one is that it does not exist. The second one is that it comes generally from a childhood trauma in development or a memory of a trauma. Fear of abandonment comes from a programmed memory. What do I mean by that? We are like computers. There is so much that we learn through our lives, so much that we need to know automatically like a software program so that we can get through our day. We may learn to use an ATM automatically or the clutch of our car automatically or perhaps steam rice automatically without thinking about turning on the gas, filling up the water, putting in the rice. It becomes automatic. So our cognitions, our brain, just files away the software to boiling rice or using an ATM or using a typewriter or turning on your computer and there's no real conscious thought anymore with that particular action. You may remember a time when you're feeling really anxious that your cognitions swap a couple of software programs. For example, you might do something like try to open your car with your mobile phone or uh, perhaps you put your phone in the fridge or take two programs that you've learned and you swap them in your mind and they get mixed up because you're stressed. That's because the body, the mind is taking on too much. So most of us have a memory where we've swapped two automatic cognitions. So they run on autopilot and because we've got so much on, they become mixed up. We are like computers. Fear of abandonment or part of fear of abandonment, and I don't want to demean anyone's feelings here. It's a learned response to a stimuli. And once you've learned it, it's like software programmed into you. You may have an experience with a spider when you're younger and then that response becomes automatic. There may be no logical reason to have the fear but when the stimuli is there, is present, your heart may race, you may uh, perspire and you may feel highly agitated. It's a learned response. Our body, our mind learns responses for many reasons. The main one is survival, but sometimes a learned response goes awry, goes askew. So we learn to have a fear of a, of an animal or an insect or an experience to keep us safe. So the software has a reason. Does that make sense? The software, the cognitive software has a reason. When we have difficult experiences as a child, the software is very strong, very strong. As a child, if we have lacked, lacked, lacked some love or some care from our caregivers, and it may even be subconscious, perhaps one of our caregivers is busy or working or away, it may not be there their, uh, I don't like to use the word fault, but caused or stimulated by what they have done. As a child, we may just internalize that issue. We know from research that when a child has a car accident, even under the age of two, that that 
affects the software of the mind and that creates fears, learned responses and the child may not even know why they're scared of a particular issue. As a child I witnessed a, uh, a train accident when I was upon the platform and the accident occurred while the bells were ringing, you know, the ding, ding, ding. And after the accident occurred, I could not go anywhere where I could hear the ding, ding of the train. So my father would go with me to the station each day and stand with me while I listened to the ding, ding, ding. And he said, he's a brilliant, beautiful man. He said it was important that I listen to the ding, ding, ding of the train. And now, when I listen to the sound of the ding ding of the train, I think of my father's love. I no longer remember the accident. My mind remembers the love. So fear of abandonment can come from an early memory or a past memory where we have created software in order to protect ourselves. Does the software serve us now? Does it serve us now? There's a number of ways to undo the software or change the software. Now, it's not easy. It's not a matter of just listening to one meditation. It's a matter of seeking professional help. The other approach to fear of abandonment is that it does not exist. And to be aware to acknowledge that it does not exist. Fear of abandonment is to feel feelings, anxiety, unhappiness, stress, emptiness, a hollowness, a hole in your life, a lacking due to a belief, a sensation that you have been left alone. So there's a number of feelings there. It is a high highly agitated, fear is highly agitated, where all our physical responses are highly agitated. It's an animal response. It's not an enlightened response. It's not our higher self. It's a pre-programmed animal adrenaline response. That means we haven't thought it through. We've learned it. Software. Fear. Fear serves us at certain times. It teaches us to run away from lions and tigers. It also may be created with experiences of relationships, loss and life experience. The body feels fear in order to protect us from harm. Sometimes the fear does not serve us. Abandonment, loss, meaning loss, lack, a whole, an incompleteness. So looking down upon the fear of abandonment, it does not tangibly exist, except in your mind. Now I can simply say to you, fear of ab abandonment is something your mind creates. Now, I think that's also quite patronizing and quite demeaning. We are powerful cognitive creatures and we learn fear for a reason to protect ourselves. At the same time, we create the feeling of fear, not the stimulus, the feeling of fear, and we create the feeling of abandonment. If you look at abandonment, it does not exist. People just act out. People just do. People just behave. They do not treat another person. The other person makes a decision how to internalize experience. Does that make sense? You cannot be abandoned. Someone may choose to behave in a certain way. You choose how to feel about that. Someone can walk away from you. You choose how to feel about that. 
you choose how to feel. Someone may not return your calls. Someone may not engage with eye contact with you when you are speaking. You choose how to perceive that. Abandonment is not a fact. It is not something that we can say definitely exists or doesn't. It is a feeling. And it's a feeling that comes from the one who feels abandoned. That's really important to get your head around that. The feeling of abandonment can only be felt by the person who feels abandoned. So the person who feels abandoned creates and chooses the feeling of abandonment. Now I know, I know if you've had a terrible experience in a relationship or lost a loved one, the last thing you want to hear is that you've created the feeling of abandonment. I get that. I've lost people to death. I've had people leave me in relationships. I've had very difficult experiences. And I wouldn't want someone to tell me that I'm creating feelings. We have a range of feelings we can choose. We can teach ourselves over time, often with professional support, to adjust those feelings, the way someone would adjust the journey and pathway of a stream, gently. Like a little beaver, we need to sometimes build little dams to protect ourselves in our stream of feelings. If somebody leaves you in a relationship, they're not actually leaving you, you feel left. They're just doing their stuff. They're full of their story, their experiences, their stuff. We choose how to feel about that. And this is a challenging concept, one that I struggle with at times. It's important, in order to feel happy, that we are aware of our mortality. That one day this life will end. If we avoid looking at that concept, the opportunity for fear raises its head. Life is a gift and it's about appreciating this moment and this moment and this moment with awareness. With complete awareness. Now through our pathway of life, we may meet our significant other and walk along the pathway of life, holding hands for a period of time. It's not going to be forever. There will be times when we're alone. There will be times where we are alone. We have, or we are, one soul. We may be able to communicate with other souls. Through prayer, through group thought, but we are one soul. Our mortal life ends as one soul and begins as one soul. So to travel through the journey of life, focusing on a need, focusing on a need for another person to behave in a certain way, is giving away your opportunity for happiness. Because you, I, we can't create, we can't force feelings from others. We are not responsible for their feelings and behaviours, we are responsible for our own. If somebody leaves us, they're just behaving. We choose to wish them well, we choose to forgive them, we choose to understand, we choose to accept. Now if we've had a childhood, which is fragmented or perhaps has lacked some love or some nurturing or some development, we may be more likely to feel fear of abandonment. 
Now again, it may not be that you were not loved, it was that you may have felt unloved because of whatever happened when you were younger. Caregivers can sometimes be busy or absent and it's beyond their control. It's vital we don't blame because that again sets another software program going where we lose control of our feelings. We can, through meditation and professional help, create our own software. We can create and build our own software. The first step is to recognize that we are animal and we are spiritual or we are conscious and we are animal reactive, proactive, conscious, animal reactive. Acceptance is a big part of the healing process and acceptance comes, comes in waves like the ocean. Imagine acceptance is like waves of the ocean smoothing out a rough or sharp pebble. It takes wave after wave after wave after wave after wave after wave. There are many steps here. One of the first steps is awareness and acknowledgement of our animal side. Awareness and acknowledgement that we choose our feelings and know it is not a simple process. It can be challenging to rewrite our cognitive software and that's okay. Perhaps part of the process is to forgive. But forgive without being reactive to look down upon our feelings and work towards having an even approach to life rather than a heightened approach. Happiness comes from contentment, peace and consistency. Happiness does not come from bliss. Happiness does not come from being in love. Happiness does not come from euphoria. From there, fear of abandonment, so we have two approaches. It's a learned animal approach we use to keep ourselves safe, so it serves a purpose. Sometimes that software is misplaced. We can rewrite that software with a number of support mechanisms. One is definitely professional help. A meditation can support that process. Fear does not essentially exist, it's not tangible, and abandonment does not essentially exist. It is not tangible, you cannot touch it, you can only feel it. Who does the feeling? You do the feeling, I do the feeling. Who chooses the feeling? Our minds choose the feeling. So like a potter moulds a piece of clay, we can mould our mind. Meditation is a useful support therapy to do so. What are some of the mechanisms that help us stop feeling fear of abandonment or decrease feeling fear of abandonment? I like the word decrease rather than stop because it is an animal instinct that is heightened if you are, if you felt a trauma in your past. Self-care. Look after yourself. Are you looking after yourself? When I say look after yourself, it is a mild, constant looking after yourself. It's not a reactive go to the gym for two hours. It's a nice walk in the sun. It's an eat wholesome food rather than a diet. It's a constant, sober, accepting self-care. So self-care is an important component. Building a plan 
and following through with that plan and acknowledging that plan and reviewing that plan. So it's not a strict, stringent plan that, that is stressful. It's a constant, steady, proactive plan. The next part of letting go of the fear of abandonment is to have boundaries. Sometimes when we build up software, uh, enabling the fear of abandonment, we continue to allow people to behave in a way that is not good for us. We can choose to accept behavior, withdraw from behavior, or ask for change. When we ask for change in another person, because it's important to give them the opportunity for change, once or twice is enough. And of course, there's still breaking behavior when we just walk away. Part of giving up the fear of abandonment is to form boundaries to know your boundaries and to assert your boundaries. So there's planning here, know your boundaries, assert your boundaries, identify and respect your boundaries. The next step in giving up or reducing fear of abandonment is to know that you are ultimately in control. Your feelings are your feelings are your feelings are your feelings. Someone who treats you badly does not essentially treat you in any way. They're simply behaving and walking along their software, through their software and their journey. You choose whether to walk along with them. Now, one of the traits of fear of abandonment is we can enter a toxic or a repetitive pattern with another soul that we become comfortable with. Sometimes we become comfortable with patterns of behavior that are not good for us. We don't always feel comfortable with patterns that are good for us. Sometimes they're not good for us. It's important to recognize this and choose to walk away. Choose what is best for you. Look after yourself so that you can look after others. We look after ourselves so that we can look after others. That's a brief overview. So the important points to remember here, important points to remember are that you are ultimately in control. Don't allow this point to stress you. I do believe in professional help. You are in control. Fear of abandonment does not actually exist. It's not tangible. You can't touch it. You can only feel it. Who is doing the feeling? You are doing the feeling. Who can undo the feeling? You can undo the feeling. Yes, I know it's not simple. I understand that. Now, Let's start by acknowledging the fear of abandonment and feeling self-love. So you may say to yourself, I have at times chosen to feel a fear of abandonment. I have at times chosen to feel a fear of abandonment. I choose to feel self-love. I choose to feel complete within myself. I understand that I do not need any other person to behave in any particular way. I do not need support. I do not need somebody to behave, to act, to do in any particular way. I choose to complete myself. I choose to complete my 
self. As a soul, I was born by myself. My mind is my mind. My consciousness is my consciousness. I may at times give to others and love others, but I choose my feelings. I ultimately choose my feelings. I consciously choose my feelings. I choose as a stream may redirect itself over time. I choose the stream of my mind to be complete within itself. Within itself. I choose to love myself. I choose to let go of the past. I choose to love myself. I choose to let go of the past. Remember that letting go of the past is a gradual process. It's a process. I choose to love myself by myself. 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 I complete myself. I complete myself. I set my boundaries to look after myself so that I can love others. I set boundaries in order to look after myself so that I can love others. Other souls can behave as they choose to. I do not control their behavior. I do not control their feelings. I control my feelings. I control my feelings. I love myself. I control my feelings. I love myself. I control my feelings. I love myself. Breathe slowly. Breathe slowly, relax your face. Let your face go. Breathe slowly, relax your tongue, let your tongue go. Accept the feelings you have now, accept the state you have today. The state you are in, the way you feel will vary from day to day and that's okay. Say to yourself, I'm okay. Ten, nine, relax. Eight, relax. Seven, relax. Six, quietly, softly. your entire body. Relax your entire body, head to toe, to one, head to toe, toe to head, fingers, toe to head, head to toe, toes. Knees. Hips. Eyes. Mouth. Jaw. Neck. Heart. navel area around your navel. Relax now. Relax now, you're okay. 
Relax now, you're okay. Relax now, you're okay. Say to yourself, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Relax now. I'm okay, relax now, I'm okay. Relax now, I'm okay. Relax now, I'm okay. Breathe slowly, let your mind go. Let it go. Let it go like waves in the ocean. Let go. Waves in the ocean. Into the shore and back out to ocean. Into the shore and back out to ocean. Into the shore and back out. Let go your mindful self. Breathe slowly. Breathe slowly. Slow your breathing down. Slow your breathing down. Breathe slowly. Breathe slowly now. Slow your breathing down. You're okay. Slow your breathing down. You're okay. Slow.